Hi, I'm Sergeant Ty Engstrom with the Portland Police Bureau's Traffic Division. I'm here to talk to you today about something that affects all of us, and that is DUI drivers on our roadways. We're coming into the holiday season, and with that, there are a lot of folks that may choose to partake in things that could intoxicate them. And we want to talk a little bit today about the repercussions of getting behind the wheel when you've been intoxicated. The legal limit in Oregon is 0.08% blood alcohol content if you're driving a regular vehicle. It's 0.04% blood alcohol content if you're driving a commercial motor vehicle. And if you're under 21 years of age, it's zero. You can't have any alcohol in your system. So the reason I stopped you today was that uh, you were having a hard time maintaining that lane. Have you had anything to drink today? There's a lot of different things that an officer can look for to develop probable cause for a DUI arrest. Once the officer develops a probable cause, the officer usually does some standardized field sobriety tests, and it's just a series of physical tests to confirm the officer's belief that the person has been driving under the influence. So under the motorist implied consent law, when you have a driver's license, you're implying that you will consent to a test when asked for intoxicants. And so you might be asked to give a breath test or a blood test or a urine test, depending on the scenario. If you fail the test, uh, depending on your driving record, you may have a 90-day or a one-year suspension. And if you refuse the test, you may have a one-year to a three-year suspension, depending on your driving record. Also, if you refuse a test, you will have a $650 fine. So it's not just alcohol. It could be marijuana. It could be your prescription medication because you just went through a surgery and you're, and you're taking your pain medication. Even if you're taking it as prescribed, it could affect you in a way that you're impaired and you're unsafe to be operating a vehicle on the roadways. It could get extremely expensive. It could affect your insurance rates. If you drive for a living, it could affect your job. Uh, not only if you drive for a living, but if you need to be able to commute to get to work and back. And so it could affect your ability to provide for your family or provide for yourself. If you're going to put some sort of an intoxicating substance into your body, do not drive. Call a friend, call a family member, call a cab, take public transportation, whatever you got to do, don't get behind the wheel.